Hello everybody and welcome back to part two of this lecture covering the financial statements. So we are here now at um, step seven of uh, the accounting cycle, which is the financial statements. And um, where we left off, we had just finished the income statement, which is the first of the three financial statements that we're going to prepare. So now it's time to move on to the statement of retained earnings. <clears throat> now, when we talk about the statement of retained earnings, the first thing you need to understand is what the heck is retained earnings. We have not talked about that in this class yet. It was mentioned in chapter one, but um, like I told you, I have chosen to present the information in a different order than the textbook did because in my opinion, I, um, I don't want to bombard you with too much information at the beginning. I want to kind of give it to you in baby steps. And really, um, retained earnings is a concept that kind of comes into play now, okay? Um, and what retained earnings is, is a total of all of the earnings of the business that have been retained in the business over the entire life of the business. Okay, so um, there are those two words that when you think about retained earnings, it is earnings that have been retained. Okay, so let's break those two things down. First of all, that term earnings. I've mentioned it before, but in case we forgot what it is, um, that term earnings is another word for profit, for net income or income, or how much money we made. Okay, so basically earnings is all the money that the business made from the very beginning that that business ever existed, okay? Uh, but the key is I want to know just what was retained in the business. And so what that means is that um, the business doesn't necessarily keep all of the earnings in the business. Sometimes they choose to give some of the earnings to the owners in the form of dividends, okay? So dividends are basically earnings that were then distributed out to the owners and everything that was left in the business was then retained, okay? Um, now, we call this, or I call it, I don't know if anybody else calls it this, but I personally call it a bridge statement because it bridges the gap between the income statement and the balance sheet. Okay, there's information on the income statement that we need for this statement of retained earnings um, in order to then prepare the balance sheet. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that process momentarily, but just know that that's why it's a bridge because, you know, this, this statement in and of itself isn't that informative, but you need it in order to, to do to get from one informative statement, the income statement, to a different informative statement, which is the balance sheet, okay? Um, and the purpose of the statement of retained earnings is that it shows the changes, okay, changes in retained earnings due to net income and dividends over a period of time. Okay, so that's why we call it a bridge, okay? Consider the bridge, you know, bridge is, it takes you from um, one location to another location, right? Um, but in this instance, we're going to think of this bridge as, a, as spanning a period of time. So this is the end of one month, and over here is the end of another month. Or um, this is the end of one year. And this is the end of the other year, okay? And this is the whole year of activity in between. So it's really just going from one accounting period on one side to the next accounting period on another side, okay? So let me show you um, the basic formula of the statement of retained earnings, okay? And the way it goes is this. We start with retained earnings and here it says beg, <laughs> that's short for beginning. 
In other words, the retained earnings at the beginning of the period. So at the beginning of this accounting period, which again was the end of the previous accounting period. So if this period was uh, 2017 right here, at the end of 2017, we tallied up all of our retained earnings that we had at that point in time, at the end of 2017. Now it's the beginning of 2018. Okay, we start out 2018, the beginning of 2018, with the same amount we had at the end of 2017. Okay, nothing happened between 11:59 um, p.m. on December 31st, 17, and then Jan 12 a.m. January 1st, 2018. Okay, it's the same number. Okay, so retained earnings at the beginning of the period. And then we look at all the things that were added or subtracted to retained earnings to get us to our ending balance, okay? So the things that add to retained earnings are any additional earnings that came during the year, right? So remember, here we left off, this was the end of 2017. Now we're starting 2018, okay? So during 2018, Hopefully, we made money, right? And so that money we made is the net income for the period, okay? And where did we get this net income from? Oh, we got it from here, the income statement, okay? So we prepared an income statement. This income statement here would then be for the year ended December 31st, 2018. So all of 2018, how much money did we make? Well, we take that number, that's our net income for 2018, and this red arrow here is pointing out, it's pointing out because it leads us to the next statement, and the next statement, it comes in here as the net income being added to the beginning retained earnings. So beginning retained earnings is what did we have at the beginning of 2018? Net income is the additional earnings that we added during the year 2018, okay? But remember, this is the statement of retained earnings, okay? And not all earnings are retained in the business. Most of them are because the business needs those earnings to grow, to be able to buy more assets, buy more equipment, um, rent another store location, pay for more employees, pay for more supplies, all of that stuff. They need a lot of the earnings in the business, but sometimes the owners want to take some of it out, so they take it out in the form of dividends, okay? So that's why we subtract dividends because they are not being retained in the business anymore. They're being taken out, okay? So again, this activity tells us everything that we put in and everything that we took out during the year, everything we put in was net income, and everything we took out was dividends during the year, okay? And then that will bring us to the end of our bridge, which is retained earnings at the end of the year. So in other words, retained earnings as of December 31st, 2018, in this particular instance, okay? So let me show you uh, an example of what that looks like with numbers, so you can kind of get an idea. Um, okay, so what you see here, um, and again, this, like I said, is on page 20 of your textbook. Uh, here was the income statement that we prepared. In this case, it was for the month ended December 31st, 2018. And the net income or earnings they made for that month was $4,400. Okay. So now if we, oops, sorry, went a little too far. Why is it not letting me? Huh. Sorry, guys. I don't know, let's see here. Okay, perfect, there, I got it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here you see now, so this was the income statement, and here is the statement of retained earnings. So again, you see that header, the name of the company, the name of the statement, the statement of retained earnings, 
And this statement is also dated for a period of time for the month ended December 31st, 2017. And again, it must be a period because that's the whole point of this statement is to show us the change over that period of time from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. Okay. Um, so what you see here is retained earnings at the beginning of the period. The beginning of the period was, was December 1st, 2017, because again, this is just a month. We're looking for just a month at a time. And this was a new business. So they didn't have any retained earnings at the beginning of the year. They started out with nothing. Okay. Um, but they made money during the year, which we see here in our income statement. So that number, we add net income, and that goes here from the income statement to the statement of retained earnings. But not all of that earnings was retained in the business. Some of it was taken out in the form of dividends. So here it says less dividends. So we subtract the 200. And that gives us retained earnings at the end of the period, December 31st, 2017. And that's this number right here. Okay. And the end of the period here should match the end of the period here in your header. Okay. So this is showing us that change in retained earnings from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. And that is the statement of retained earnings. Um, oh, one, one other quick comment I wanted to make. Um, then the next month, when we record the next set of activity, um, this retained earnings at the end of the period is going to become the retained earnings at the beginning of the period for the next accounting period, okay? So it's all kind of cyclical, but it'll go back. So this is this basically tells us how much money the business made up through this point in the life of the business um, that was retained in the business, okay? So now I think is a good time to take a break again, and we will talk about the last statement, the balance sheet, in the next video.